Burnhouse Lane. This is a fantastic indie horror adventure game with some light combat. I was really immersed in the game when I was playing it and found myself transported to another world that felt very real despite the simple animations. The art was so amazing with the paper doll like look to the characters. I love the art style so much. There were a lot of moments that hit hard emotionally. The music was fantastic. I don't want to get too deep into the story because it would be a shame to give it away. It is altered by the choices you make in the game, which eventually determines the ending you get. The world you inhabit in this game is very disturbing. While it doesn't have senseless madness and cruelty, it all serves the story and characters. It does have very graphic madness and cruelty that can be hard to experience at times. This game is not for anyone who is easily disturbed and is unable to look at dark and disturbing things. It goes to some places that are more extreme than most games. It also takes on issues like cancer, suicide, assault, torture, the nature of evil, body horror, and moral ambiguity. Yet somehow it ties it all together into a beautiful and moving story. If you like replaying adventure games, you can just play it and make decisions as you see fit and experience the outcome. Then you can look up other ways to approach things in the future. Like for example, saving Arno, or making George good sandwiches. If you just want to end things on a high note, you can always look up what's necessary for the golden ending in an online walkthrough on YouTube. Let's talk about the characters in the story. I found the main character Angie very likable, empowered, and compelling. She's a nurse that smokes too much and has terminal cancer. She goes to the country to take care of George, a wonderfully sweet older man. But dark things lurk beneath the surface of this country house, and even darker things are in the shady areas of her mind. At first the game feels small, but then things start to happen to open up a larger world, with many characters to meet and places to go. I really connected with some of the main characters in this story and enjoyed watching them learn and grow. The place that's referred to in the title, Burnhouse Lane, is a place in the game, and it's like a twisted wonderland from Alice in Wonderland. It's hard to tell what is meant to be real in the story and what is a figment of Angie's imagination. And at times, the game itself becomes a living embodiment of her cancer. And this is both disturbing and fascinating as an experience. You save the game by smoking cigarettes, which feels wrong with the story being told, but also makes perfect sense. I read somewhere that the game is a long anti-smoking ad, and that may be the best description I have seen of it, to be honest. The fighting mechanics in the game are very simplistic, but satisfying. The combat in the game is shooting, dashing to safety, and axe fighting. One boss near the end can be a real fun challenge if you're patient and try to defeat him with the axe. It was actually quite a satisfying experience of careful timing and strategy. I think that this game isn't for everyone. Some of the sounds and sights in this game cannot be unseen, but for those that love disturbing indie horror games like point and click type adventure games, that love great art, that love beautiful stories, I recommend it. For those people, 10 out of 10. Yes. I think you might actually have a chance. I have a good feeling about you. It's your voice I heard on the phone, isn't it? Who are you? <laughs>